Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel Medicus Guide and in this video we will be continuing with the lecture that was about the shoulder and shoulder girdle and in the previous lecture we discussed about the glenohumeral joint, the introduction of it as well as the convex concave theory and also if you want to grab a concept of the convex concave theory so you can watch that video which is with the name of this convex concave theory and I'll also mention the link in the description so in order to get the detailed uh, view as well as the detailed understanding of this concept so you can watch that video but here specifically we'll be discussing it with respect to this joint okay so now let's continue with the arthrokinematics of the glenohumeral joint okay so first of all let me just give you the overview of the previous lecture okay so first of all we discussed about that what is the shoulder complex all right so in the shoulder complex we have different joints the one is you can say okay so basically this shoulder complex is made up of two different joints there are three synovial joints and the two functional joints now in the synovial joints as we have said that there are three so what are these three joints there are synovial joints these are the GH that is the glenohumeral joint we have the SC and the AC SC is the sternoclavicular and the AC is the acromioclavicular so these are the three synovial joints while in the functional joints we have two functional joints and these are the scapulothoracic so in short you can write it as ST and then the last one is supra humeral so these are all the joints that we'll be discussing in a greater detail so in the previous video we just discussed about the glenohumeral and that was just a part of it okay so here we'll be continuing the part of that glenohumeral joint that was left and then we'll be discussing about the other synovial joints as well as it we if the video didn't go that long so we'll also discuss about the scapulothoracic joint so now let's take a look at the arthrokinematics so as we know that in the convex concave theory we have we first have to define that what are the surfaces like if they are convex surfaces or the concave surfaces so by the surfaces i mean the surfaces of the bones that are making the joint okay so in defining the surfaces we first must know that what is that bone that is moving so we have to identify the moving bone in the glenohumeral joint as we know that the humerus is a moving bone so humerus is having what surface it is having a convex surface with respect to the glenoid cavity all right so the glenoid cavity is concave while the while the humerus head is convex so now we have this convex surface of the humerus as well as while this uh, glenoid cavity is concave now we have to see that what would be the rule so as we already know whenever the convex surface is moving on the concave surface what happens what is the rule it is always opposite the gliding or which you can call it the slide a sliding is always opposite to the movement of the bone or the rolling if we just uh, take a look at the rolling so uh, as we know that the rolling is always in the direction of the movement of the bone so it would be the same same with respect to the movement of the bone while the gliding and the sliding would be opposite to the movement of the bone so here it is said that the arthrokinematic principle says that the sliding would be in the opposite direction on the glenoid fossa then the rolling is in the same direction so it says the same that I have told you now let's talk about the stability so there are two types of stability stability is of the two types the one is static stability while the other is dynamic stability now dynamic as the name shows that the dynamic means movement so this is a type of stability that is provided during the movement of that joint so it is obvious it would be provided by the muscles by the contraction of the muscles surrounding that structure 
while the static stability is provided by the static components that are not contractible or they are not contractile you can say so these structures are like the capsules or the ligaments or other structures that can provide such stability so here let us see that what are those structures that provide the glenohumeral joint with the static and dynamic stability so here you can see that the static stability providing structures are these the joint morphology itself ligaments and the glenoid labrum while the dynamic stability is provided by the muscle contraction and this muscle contraction is of the rotator cuff muscles these are the majority of the muscles that are contributing towards the dynamic stability and both the structures the dynamic and the static both of them contribute to the stability of the glenohumeral joint and it depends upon the position as well as the motion of the humerus and if there is elbow motion as well if the elbow is also moving then we can see there are two types of muscles that are also contributing towards the towards this stability and these two structures are two muscles the bicep and the tricep so this bicep muscle provides the superior stability the superior shoulder joint support and the tricep provides the inferior joint support and to be more specific the long head of these two muscles contribute to the stability and yes the long head of the bicep in particular provides the stability in the humeral elevation so i must write it with the new pen with a different color so that it may be obvious for you so it stabilizes the humeral elevation so we can say that it provides the stability to the glenohumeral joint in the anterior direction so this is providing anterior stability to the gh joint all right so this happens when the shoulder is abducted and externally rotated so this way the gh joint moves anteriorly and in that in that condition in that situation the bicep muscles the long head of the bicep specifically contributes to the stability to the gh joint and now as we talked about the dynamic structures that they are responsible for providing the stability to the gh joint so they are being coordinated by the neuromuscular system as we already know that the muscles are controlled by the neurons so the contraction of the muscles as well as when it would be the time for the muscles to get relaxed so this is all controlled by the neurons so this way we can say that the neuromuscular structures are as a whole contributing towards the dynamic stability okay guys so till here we have discussed about the gh joint that was all about the gh joint i have noted down i have jotted down all the important points from those paragraphs so you can take notes out of them now we are going to discuss about the other joints and these are going to be the acromioclavicular and the sternoclavicular so let's move ahead okay so let's get started with the ac joint that is a acromioclavicular joint so first of all the explanation for it is that this is a triaxial joint by the triaxial we mean that this ac joint can move in all the different planes in the horizontal plane or which you also call it the transverse plane then the sagittal plane in the frontal plane so it can move in all the planes so it is a triaxial joint then there can be a present or uh, a presence of the disc as well as there can be an absence of it as well so the presence of disc is variable all right now what are the structures that are providing the support to the weak capsule here of the ac joint so these structures are the ligaments of the ac joint and these ligaments are of two types they are superior ligament superior ac ligament and the inferior ac ligament and let's take a look at the diagram so that we can understand them in a better way so here you can see that in the ac joint there is only the demonstration of superior acromioclavicular joint the inferior would be located obviously inferiorly 
so here you can see so as we know that the ac joint has a very weak capsule they are reinforced by these ligaments the superior and the inferior ac ligaments now let's move ahead so now we have to take a look at the surfaces of the joint that are formed by these bones so here we can see in this diagram So this one is the acromioclavicular joint and here you can see that this clavicle is convex while the acromion process is having what structure, what surface sorry. So this, is, uh, this surface is concave. So let me draw it here as well so that you may have a better demonstration. So this is a clavicle, say this is a clavicle. Okay, so here you can see this is having a convex surface, surface is convex and this is a clavicle while the acromion process is having a concave surface so it is like this and as you know that it is attached is a part of a scapula all right so here this is a concave surface so can you predict that what is going to be the convex concave rule here so I hope that it is now clear to you, acromion process, alright. Okay, now let's take a look at the arthrokinematics of the AC joint. So, just as we said, that first of all, uh, if you would follow the processes or the steps, you can say, then it would be easier for you to define this uh, concept of this convex concave theory that what is going to be the movement or the sliding, gliding and the rolling at the joint, at any particular joint. Alright, so first of all we have to define the surfaces. Alright, so here we have already defined that this clavicle is a convex while this acromion is a concave. So we know that what surfaces are each of these bones. Alright, then in the next step what we are supposed to do is to uh, predict that what is going to be the moving bone. So here we have to identify the movable bone or the moving bone you can say so here the moving bone is acromion process is the acromion yeah you can see the acromion process so this one is moving now you have to define this principle or this theory in uh, with respect to the moving bone so here the moving bone is concave so as we know that principle that whenever the concave bone is moving on the convex what happens whenever the concave is moving so the rolling and sliding is going to be in the same direction so uh, yeah the rolling is going to be in the same direction as well as the sliding or the gliding is in the same direction as well and remember this for the convex as well let me just tell you here so that you can have the combined understanding of both of these principles that whenever the convex bone is moving so the rolling Rolling is always going to be the same with respect to the movement of the bone. So you just remember this thing that rolling is going to be same. And what is to be remembered here is the sliding or the gliding. The slide or you can also call it glide. So this is to be remembered. So the gliding here is opposite to the bone movement. In the case of convex bone moving. So the final step was that we have to define the relation of the rolling and the gliding with respect to the movement of the bone so yes and this is what is linked with the AC joint in the AC joint what rule is being followed that is a concave theory okay concave is moving on the convex bone now the remaining part of this discussion is very easy so you can also give a read yourself so here they are talking of the mo motions that can affect this joint so these motions are the upward rotation, downward rotation, the winging of the vertebral border and the tilting of the inferior angle then the stability so here the stability is provided by the strong coracoclavicular ligaments that I can show you here coracoclavicular ligaments so here you can see these are the coracoclavicular ligaments so the medial on the medial side we have the conoid ligament and on the lateral side we have the trapezoid ligament so these are the two strong clavicular coracoclavicular ligaments that are providing support to this ac joint 
but you, as we have already seen that there was no such muscle that could provide the stability to this joint so here there is no muscle directly that is contributing to the dynamic stability now moving towards our last joint right there, that is the sternoclavicular joint so this joint is incongruent why incongruent so it is incongruent with respect to the radii of the two bones that are making this joint so here you can see this is the sternoclavicular joint the radius of this uh, sternal notch is a bit short while the radius of this this bone that is the sternal head of the clavicle is a bit large so here you can see this there is a bit incongruency in the joint as there is no full contact of the two bones together so this joint is incongruent let me write it as well so we are talking of the SC joint here we can see that this is incongruent and it is also a triaxial it means that the movement can occur at all the three planes then this is a saddle shaped joint all right guys since the video has gone too long so i'm just stopping it here in the next part of this video we'll be discussing about the saddle shaped joint and i have already drawn this image here but i couldn't explain it here because now the i'm just stopping it here so that the video won't get too long so in the next part of this video we'll be discussing that what is this joint as well as the we will complete this joint of the sc joint the discussion of this sc joint as well as the other things like the scapular stability functional articulations and the other parts as well all right so stay tuned and thanks for watching